Geometric algebra is an incredibly powerful branch of mathematics that extends the usual operations on numbers to geometric shapes. In school, we first learned about elementary arithmetic, where you add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers. We then later learned elementary algebra, where we started describing these operations on arbitrary numbers. This allowed us to start finding equations that were valid for all numbers. Similarly, there is geometric arithmetic, where you add, subtract, multiply, and divide shapes. This leads to geometric algebra, where you start describing these operations on arbitrary shapes. This allows you to start finding equations that are valid for all shapes. Geometric algebra provides a natural way to convert geometric problems into algebraic problems which can be much easier to solve. For example, reflecting a shape across a line uses this simple equation. Geometric algebra is useful for more than geometry, however. Many problems in areas like physics, engineering, mathematics, robotics, computer graphics, and more are geometric problems. So geometric algebra provides solutions in all of these fields. Geometric algebra is actually a fairly recent development. Back in the 1800s, many different algebraic systems to describe geometry were popping up. In the end, the one that came out on top was something called vector algebra. Vector algebra can describe many things, but there are certain situations where it is not enough. Many people started tacking on new mathematical ideas to try to fill these gaps, and while they did manage to be successful in describing more than vector algebra could, the result was a massive kludge of many separate ideas. This situation makes everything hard to understand and learn. This problem began to be resolved in the 1960s, when David Hestinez started using geometric algebra in physics. Since then, Geometric algebra has been applied to many other fields, providing many new insights and unifications between disciplines. Geometric algebra accomplishes this by being one simple framework that encompasses all of the others. You might think that this makes geometric algebra more complicated than the alternatives, but it is usually the opposite. While geometric algebra can get a bit complicated at times, in most cases, it doesn't get any more complicated than what you would have seen using something else, and in many cases, it is simpler. If geometric algebra is so useful, then how come it doesn't seem to be used that much? One probable reason that geometric algebra is not used at lower levels is that there is not much introductory material for it. Most introductions are only found in scientific papers that are way too dense for a beginning student. These papers are usually explaining how to apply geometric algebra to an old problem so that people generally have to learn topics without using geometric algebra before they can learn them with geometric algebra. This causes professors to not care about geometric algebra, and so then there is nobody to teach the students. I am hoping to remedy many of these problems by making this video series, From Zero to Geo, we are going to start at the level of high school algebra, and from there, completely develop geometric algebra from the ground up. This will allow students to learn geometric algebra and to use it to solve problems before learning the alternatives. My hope is that this video series will be good enough that it could be used as a textbook for teaching geometric algebra to people who only know high school algebra. You might be wondering why I decided to make a video series instead of writing a textbook. There are two main reasons. First, videos are generally more engaging than books, so hopefully a video series will be easier to use than a book. Second, by using videos, I can animate the many geometric objects that are used in geometric algebra. A lot of the writings on geometric algebra tend to focus on the algebra part of the field rather than the geometric part because it is hard to describe geometry through writing. Using videos allows me to fully integrate the geometric aspects of geometric algebra with the algebraic parts, 
allowing for a better and more complete understanding of the subject. Before we move on, there is one important clarification that I need to make. There are actually many different flavors of geometric algebra. Each of these flavors has their use, and some are better suited to certain applications than others. Because some people only care about a single application, they only focus on a particular flavor. This can confuse beginners because some terminology has a different meaning depending on the flavor. For example, vanilla geometric algebra says that vectors are an oriented line segment, while projective geometric algebra in three dimensions says that vectors are a plane. Despite these differences, it turns out that the equations are almost exactly the same in each flavor. But what flavor should we focus on? To start off, I am going to focus on vanilla geometric algebra, usually called VGA for short. It is the simplest one, algebraically speaking. When you see people talking about geometric algebra, they are often just talking about VGA. Once we have explored VGA enough, I will start to expand to other flavors. Because this is going to be like a textbook, that means that there will be exercises assigned. When you see this pencil symbol, I want you to pause the video, get out a pencil, and get to work. One of the best ways of learning is doing. If you don't do the exercises, you will not learn the material. The only excuse for not doing the exercises is if you don't want to learn. I'm going to be providing the answers to all of the exercises soon after giving them, so make sure you pause before the solution is spoiled. The types of exercises are varied. Some are purely computational. Math isn't about computation, so I don't like these kinds of problems as much, but they can be useful. They can solidify the concepts in your brain, and doing them enough can make you fast at computing. Also, getting a question wrong can sometimes show you where your understanding of the subject is hazy. Depending on the situation, I will sometimes talk through the solutions of the problems, but at other times I won't. I will always show the answer, though. There will also be exercises asking you to explore a new concept, or to try to prove some statement. If you haven't done much math, these kinds of questions might seem strange. However, they are one of the best ways to learn mathematics. They are the kinds of questions that mathematicians try to solve. When you come up to one of them, try your best to solve it. Some of them are going to be too hard, and I might even sneak in a few that are impossible. The point of these problems is not to get the right answer, but rather to get you acquainted with thinking in terms of geometric algebra. If you can't figure out one of these problems after trying everything you can think of, you can continue on in the video and see the solution. Also, if you're afraid of proofs, don't worry. I am looking for an argument more than a proof, and I wouldn't even consider my own answers to be good proofs. Here is a brief outline of my plan for this series. We will first learn about vectors. In VGA, vectors are thought of as oriented line segments, or an arrow. However, in more general contexts, vectors can be used for a lot more. We will also talk about these other uses. In geometric algebra, vectors are the foundation that we build everything else on. We will then shift our attention to multivectors. Multivectors are the main object that we use when doing geometric algebra. While multivectors can represent geometric objects such as lines and points, they can also be used to represent operations on these shapes. After developing the basic objects that we do geometric algebra with, we will talk about how to multiply them. The multiplication that we will develop is called the geometric product, and it is what sets geometric algebra apart from everything else. We will also see how the geometric product naturally encodes rotations and reflections. We will then use the geometric product to define several other useful products like the inner and outer products. After this, we will move on to the other flavors of geometric algebra. In the process, 
we are also going to learn about alternative geometries. Then we will talk about linear transformations. Linear transformations are generally a topic in a linear algebra course. However, geometric algebra provides many insights into the study of linear transformations, so we'll cover that here. Finally, we will formalize geometric algebra and rigorously prove that everything we have been doing is correct. This chapter is optional for most people, being included mainly for the professional mathematicians. One thing to note is that I haven't actually made these videos yet at the time of recording, so it's possible that this plan might change slightly. I am going to put a table of contents into the description of this video that I will fill in as I make more videos in the series. With all of that said, I hope that you will join me in discovering geometric algebra.